welcome to Viscount's organ tutorial series for 2019, which we're recording this year in the beautiful church of St Mary's, Whitney. I'm Francis Rumsey, organist and choirmaster here, and in this series I'll be discussing registration schemes for various styles of music with Jonathan Kingston. We're using a Viscount Regent 356 physis based digital organ which offers a lot of registration flexibility over three manuals and pedals. We hope that you'll enjoy listening to our ideas about how to deal with music ranging from Basque chorale preludes through to franc and howls. For our third tutorial in this year's series, Jonathan and I are going to discuss and demonstrate a challenge that most organists will have to master at some stage in their careers what I would call the seamless crescendo. Of course, there's no such thing as a totally seamless crescendo on the organ because stops have to be added in stages and the swell boxes are not sufficient on their own to take the instrument from PP to FF. It is, however, possible to give the impression of something that sounds reasonably smooth. We've chosen to illustrate the technique using extracts from a Howl psalm prelude. A number of Howell's works involve some pretty impressive stage crescendos, followed by a climb down again to something very quiet. It's a useful technique to be able to master for a variety of other works too. It usually involves a certain amount of what one of my teachers called boxing and coxing, that is, opening and closing the swell box while gradually adding stops on the swell and the grate. It helps to have divisional thumb or toe pistons Otherwise, you may need an assistant. Well, um, Jonathan, you don't have an assistant here, but you do have some uh, pistons to hand. Absolutely. Um, can we have a look at the beginning of set one, number one, yes. um, Psalm Prelude? Because this one starts off pretty quiet, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's very much a sort, of, sort of a feeling of ebb and flow in Howells' music, uh, particularly in his Psalm Preludes. And uh, towards the end of these phrases is often where you can add or subtract registers, um, balancing each change with the swell box. Um, I'm choosing to use use the strings on both the swell and the choir organs um, and you'll notice at the beginning of the second phrase um, I'll add a four foot a stringed principle, a Geigen principle on the swell to give a bit of brightness uh, to the second phrase. Another option could be to actually add uh, an octave coupler um, if, you, if you have one at uh, your disposal. So. So we got up to something modest there, which he labels F, but which of course is nothing like the F we get You've to just today. got to treat that in context, I think, really. Um, you have uh, a, a great deal of, of, of variety to, to uh, explore louder registers later on in this piece. Um, so to me, uh, that would suggest just the opening of the box with whatever resources you already have drawn and a gradual quickening in tempo as well to add to the, to the excitement. Right. And then we're going to skip the next bit and move yeah. along to the, the main general crescendo sure. in the middle of the piece, which is really taking us from, well, very little at all up to pretty much full, the full resources. And, yes. um, and then back down again to nothing, That's uh, which right. is a classic Howells thing. Yes. Um, so you're going to talk us through 
the different stages in this crescendo and what you do at each point, if you sure, would. Thank sure, sure. Well, the first theme begins, and I choose to solo that out on a clarinet or an orchestral reed. Um, there is no reason why um, an, another voice couldn't be used, but, but I, I simply like doing that in mm. order to illustrate the solo line. Um, the right hand then goes on to the great. Um, I try to build the swell organ then uh, through the next um, uh, bars, uh, gradually opening the box after each registration change is done. You will tend to find that, that registration changes will come on with a bang if the box is not closed before the crescendo begins. So um, hopefully, if I, if I time that correctly, um, one should be aware that organ tone is just gradually increasing more and more and more until the top of this page here, where actually um, Herbert Howells gives you the indication he wants the full swell sound, probably bolstered by some uh, some further uh, stops, uh, diapasons on the grate up to four foot, um, and the crescendos just continue instrument, um, incrementally yeah. after that. Okay. Well, perhaps play us the, the first part of this mm -hmm. up to where the full swell comes okay. in. Okay. Then, yes. So, here's the clarinet solo. Place bit of a hang. cliffhanger there, <laughs> bit of a cliffhanger. On to the next big registration chain. So at this point, because the swell box is open for that uh, swell to two foot plus oboe, I would now close it to about three quarters halfway, add the full swell, beef up the grate slightly, and then play this section. And you've got to hope that your registration is judged pretty well there because of course as you might be able to see your both your feet are, are are working quite hard there your hands are full of notes so there really isn't much of an option to do anything with regards to the uh, the management of stops or manipulation of swell boxes what you can do however is is play around with the tempo um, in order to give certain beats or certain bars due prominence and plus uh, use of rubato in the romantic style in order to uh, to give the music some um, some extra ebb and flow right because he's expressive. got you've got these hair pen that's pins, right hasn't he? but where you've got both your feet working at the same time yeah. as you're supposed to open the swell box yes. well you can't do it as you say you have to do it can't have the, it all yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> so we, we move on then to this next step up that's right so at this point um i would in the very short rest that he gives you open the swell box to its fully open stage. The full swell is already added, so there are no further stops to add. So therefore, the great piston five I would press here, which gives you the large open, the double at 16 foot, and then up to two foot with the 12th. Um, he marks the, uh, the next pedal entry, FFF, uh, with 32 foot. I don't bring on the 32 foot reed at this stage, though there's no reason why um, uh, why somebody couldn't do that if they if they so wished. I do have, have the pedal reeds at 16 foot drawn with the 32 foot double open um, as well for extra, uh, extra gravitas. Okay, well, let's hear this bit then. <laughs> And at this juncture, all you've got, really, great six, 
Um, we may as well add the 32-foot contra bombard as well for um, uh, that really full uh, full-toned snarl that it will provide. And then the next page, um, I, I often found this more difficult actually than the build-up, is how to successfully take registers off mm. without it sounding lumpy because you only have um, a few bars really to get down from FFF down to MP. Yes, I mean, he's taken us like two and a half pages to get there and That's four bars right. to get back down. Exactly, yeah. yes, exactly. So we'll have a go at that now. Thank you. Well, that takes us to just the beginning of the last page, and um, we won't demonstrate the rest of it because it's a fairly quiet conclusion. Absolutely, really. yes. Halter's music tends to, or certainly the psalm preludes of this uh, particular uh, ilk, tend to uh, start from nothing and equally end in a, in a, in a beautifully graded uh, crescendo of ethereal silence by the time you've released the last chord. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jonathan. 